Alright guys, I'm Chevy. Um, Chevy Vanderbilt. Um, what happened with me, I've been a big rebel my whole life. Just running the absolute muck through my childhood. I went to seven different schools, always getting suspended, expelled, just suspended, expelled. All these different things, just family was always moving. I was always just troubled, just a rebel, really, basically. If there was a rule, I'd break it. If there was a drug, I'd take it. And um, so when I became 15, I started working, <coughs> working hard. And I, um, from that moment on, I started drinking and smoking cigarettes. Before I knew it, I woke up, I was 17, I was shooting up, mucking around with meth, playing around with heroin, acid, pills, everything left, right and centre, just taking it, using it, stretching myself to the limits. And um, yeah, that's just been ongoing right through to I'm 27 now. And so from 15 right through. And uh, last year, in August of last year, I lost a really close friend of mine. And a girl that I like moved back to the UK. I bought a car that night, crashed it the same night. This is all in August. And I just really went into myself and I was like, you know what, the world's crap, no one cares, everything's just, you know, it's not for me, whatever. And um, since that day I was running around, ran up north to Geraldton for 10 weeks, went down south to Albany, Esperance over to Borden, just absolutely running from life. And yeah, just running hard. And then I ended up, in April of this year, I went to Bali. And I was over there drinking, smoking, doing what I was doing. I even brought drugs to Bali. And then um, in Bali at the airport coming home, one of the disciples from this church found me. And he spoke to me and he said, you know what, man, you don't have to do this on your own. God cares. He loves you, bro. He's got a plan for your life. And then that stirred with me for another month and a half. I was very pride-filled. I didn't want to come to church. But it stirred really hard in my mind and everything I was doing from then on, that month and a half was just like, just brutal. Every time I had a cigarette, every time I got the bong, every time I shot up, whatever. It was just like, God was right there just like, mate, you know, you need to be back at church, bro. You need to, you, need to sort your, you know, what are you doing? And I'm just sleeping in my swag, putting the campfire on, just bumming around, just, yeah. And so... Nine weeks ago now, I made my way into church. Yeah. And on a Sunday morning, I put my hand up at the altar call. The sermon was for me. The pastor was literally just spreading my life out onto a big whiteboard in front of everyone. Just, that was my sermon. And uh, yeah, put my hand up. I was crying mess. I was wrecked. I was smoking out in the car park before I come in. Yeah, I was just a mess. And. Uh, since that morning, that, that morning service, you'd call it, and by lunchtime, I got saved, said the sinner's prayer, let God into my life, I surrendered. So like, you know what, man, I'm sick of the running, the, the jumping around, the ducking, diving and weaving. I just want some stable ground to stand on. Yeah. And God, he gave me that. And I went home that day, grabbed all my stuff, got my bongs, my porn, my needles, Alcohol, cigarettes, everything is in the bin, tore it up, smashed it up, yeah. screamed and yelled at it, prayed over it, yeah. went through the house, went and screamed and yelled around the house, speaking tongues through the place, just absolutely loving it. And uh, from that day, I haven't touched a cigarette, drunk in a drink, nothing. God is good, He set me free, He unbound the chains that were holding me back, He opened my prison doors, and He let me walk free. And it's just been an awesome road, man. And he just, he loves each and every one more than I could love you guys. He absolutely loves us. So get into it, get involved. It's the best drug going. <laughs>